Welcome to the Web Weekly Highlights. My name is Dan Wallin, and we're all the way up to episode six already of this newsletter and the different highlights. Thanks for tuning in, and we have a lot of great stuff to cover. We're going to talk about CSS 3D transforms, authentication in Node.js, some grunt, and we'll also talk about some simple things like how do you remove those pesky console.log statements, and we have quite a few more things to cover. So let's go ahead and jump right in. One of the most fun things that I think has come out with CSS is the ability to do transforms. Now, of course, we could do animations as well with some of the more modern browsers, but transforms in particular have a lot of really compelling usage scenarios. So there's a great post out there, and you'll see the link in the newsletter, and it's called Unfolding the Box Model. And really what it is is a little walkthrough. It's all animated, has some CSS3 scattered all the way throughout, and it explores a lot of the different things that we can do with the box model and specifically with transforms. And let me move forward a little bit more here and I'll show you some examples. So you can see there we're styling some things, we can move some things around, and in just a moment he'll even get into rotations, how that works, and you can also do some actual 3D as well, even stretch boxes and do all kinds of cool things there. So if you're interested, there's more details in this particular presentation a lot of great stuff on how 3D transforms work, and if that's what you're looking to do, that's a great place to go to get information. Now, I mentioned you can do 3D transforms and really trick things out using the X, Y, and Z axes, but another post that's kind of related to this, at least a little bit, is progress bar buttons, and it's really interesting. So, in this particular post by Mary Lou, there's some information here about how to actually create some really interesting ways of showing progress bars. Now, most of us are used to the really boring one. You click on a button, progress bar pops up, and you kind of sit there and wait and do your thing. But these, I'll go ahead and click on these buttons here, show multiple ways that we could actually go in and do transforms, as well as show progress bars with those transforms. So as you see here, we have all kinds of different things loading, and the buttons will twist this way or that way. And I thought it was pretty interesting if you'd like to kind of use something that really nobody else is using that much. It's very creative. My good friend Elijah Manor has a great post called Ways to Remove Those Pesky Console.log Statements. And he walks through several different scenarios, actually. It's a very detailed post. And if you read through the comments, you'll even see others people have suggested. But it's a really great way to learn about how do you get rid of console.log, because if you do a lot of JavaScript, you probably have a lot of log statements you throw in. And he goes through things like the manual way, and there's other pros and cons, JS lint, JS hint, all that fun stuff. And what do you do to actually get these out so that when you go to production, they're not showing up in your particular code, even though nobody else can see them. So if you're interested, check out Elijah's post. One of the coolest tools that I use a lot and really like is Grunt. And I've mentioned this in some other episodes of the newsletter highlights. But Chris Coyer has a great post called Grunt for People Who Think Things Like Grunt Are Weird and Hard. And I'll admit, having used Grunt quite a bit when I first started with it, getting the actual Grunt file configured properly took a little bit of work. But if you're interested in getting into it, learning all the benefits about concatenating scripts and minifying them and things like that, Chris has a great post that'll walk you through how to get started, and it really will help automate your workflow and make you more productive. One of my favorite posts in this issue is Easy Node Authentication. I really like it because I'm working on a Node.js app as we speak, and I needed some authentication features. And this particular post actually walked me through setting up a local set of users. It hashes the passwords. It handles all that hard stuff you really don't want to have to worry about. Now, it's relying on a module called Passport. And Passport can be used for local authentication, but you can also do more social media type things like Google+, Facebook, and others that a lot of people are kind of used to logging in with. So definitely check it out if you're building Node apps, want to learn more about Passport, and how you can integrate all of this into your applications. If you work with AngularJS or really any client-side framework, then you're very accustomed to working with async processes. And if you work specifically with AngularJS, you probably use the queue service. Well, in some scenarios, we might not just have one async process. We might have, for instance, three, four, five, or more. And how do you actually do that? Do you chain them together? Do you do them all at once? What are the different techniques? Well, Thomas Burleson has a great post and some code up on GitHub that'll walk you through, as you can see here, some of the different scenarios. He walks through kind of an airport scheduling type thing where you have departures, flights, you can get the forecast, all of that good stuff. 
And then he goes through and shows different techniques that can be used to handle these async callbacks. I really like the approach because not only does he show different techniques starting from what most people would start out with to a technique at the end that really cleans up your code. So definitely check out that GitHub site if you're interested in more details on working with Q and AngularJS. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Web Weekly Highlights. I hope that there's been some good information you can take to work, apply it, and hopefully increase your productivity. Definitely take the time to peruse some of the other links. There's a lot of great content in there. Now, if you haven't already signed up, you can head over to my blog, which is weblogs.asp.net slash dwalene. And over to the right, you'll see an area where you can actually go in, just put your email, and we'll push this out to you every time we publish a new episode and a new issue of the newsletter. So thanks again for tuning in. I'd like to thank Interface Technical Training for allowing me to use their studio to film this. I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in some of the live classes I teach, you can actually go to interfacett.com and you can get more information about our remote live technology. And this allows you to take a class on JavaScript or HTML5 or C-sharp or AngularJS online from anywhere in the world, and you'll have access to all the code and views that a student locally would have, plus you can actually see the instructor as well. It's a really cool experience. So I hope to see you online at some point, and thanks again for tuning in.